Hello, welcome to the Friday, September 22nd, 2017 edition of the Science and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We did receive more emails that claim to launch DDoS attacks unless the recipient is going to pay some bitcoins. Well, at this point, we don't see any evidence that these threats materialize if you're not paying. The latest wave of these emails appear to be or claim to be associated with the Phantom Squad. This particular group did launch some successful denial of service attack against Xbox Live and Steam back in late 2015 and 2016. But again, there is no evidence here that these new emails are at all associated with Phantom Squad. And at this point, it looks rather unlikely. Nevertheless, in a couple of the Bitcoin accounts that were set up in order to receive payments, there are some Bitcoins, so it looks like they're at least partially successful. Just as a reminder, there's absolutely no reason to give in and pay off these ransom demands, even if you pay off. Really, the only thing you're signaling here is that you're an easy target and they'll come back for more shortly. And one of the vulnerabilities that I told you is must fix last week when Microsoft released its patch Tuesday was CVE 2017-8759. This was the RTF slash .NET vulnerability, a vulnerability in .NET that's typically exploited via RTF documents that are sent as email attachments. Well, FireEye has blogged at length about this vulnerability and how it has been used in targeted attacks. Now, this week, Brad spotted it in more widespread cybercrime attacks. In this particular case, Argentinian citizens were targeted. The email claimed to come from the Argentinian tax authority and it included an attachment that had a dot doc extension. So it looked like a Word document, but was actually an RTF document that then used this vulnerability in order to execute arbitrary code. In Pratt's case, the victim ended up with a version of Betabot and it was made persistent via the Windows registry. And then we got an update from Cisco regarding the CCleaner malware that uh, happened early this week. Uh, well, one big question there was whether or not the second stage of the malware was actually effective. CCleaner or Avast did dispute that. They basically said that it didn't run now Talos definitely was able to trigger it and they sort of uh, cleared that up a little bit in that the attack may actually be more targeted than originally thought. Of course, the malware may be downloaded by millions of users, but apparently this second stage only triggered if the malware was installed in one of a handful of tech companies. So all the millions of downloads of the malicious CCleaner version may have been really more a smokescreen in order to sneak this particular malware into certain organizations. Now, Intel's management engine has gotten a lot of attention lately and so often not in a good way for its ability to be used, for example, to remote control systems. But the one important security feature in this particular system is that typically only signed code is executed. So it is kind of difficult for an attacker to modify the code loaded in this particular subsystem. Now, the advantage, of course, of being able to actually accomplish this is that you're outside of the scope of pretty much any kind of system integrity or anti-malware software. Well, uh, researchers from Positive Technologies now apparently manage to execute code within the Intel management engine without signing it first. This is a vulnerability that was released to Intel. The 
actual details won't be released until December, but uh, maybe yet another reason to closer look at this particular feature in Intel CPUs. Of course, any malware installed this way would be rather persistent. Even an update of the BIOS will not delete this particular code. And once installed in the management engine, an attacker would have unfettered access to the entire system and it would not be detectable within the operating system. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.